Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Sethum and welcome back to another video for Conan Exiles. Today in this video, folks, I am going to be going through the Wine Cellar Dungeon, which is currently on the Test Live servers. So if you guys enjoy this video and find it useful and informative, please don't forget to support me and the channel by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already for more similar content from myself. And if you have just subscribed, why not check out some of my other videos and guide you on this channel. Who knows, you might just enjoy them. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you get notified when I upload new videos and content to the channel. Also, for those interested, you can always find me on the Seftopia Discord. Links to this, of course, you can find down below in the video description as well as in a pinned comment from myself. So, obviously, this is currently on the Test Live servers for PC only. And this is liable to change when it does come out. I will be doing a guide on this, however this is not a guide, this is just more or less a showcase video for the dungeon and there is quite a few things that I would like to show because there are several changes in this dungeon that we don't really see in other dungeons. Now obviously there is a very special boss at the end which I will cover in a separate video in terms of mechanics because it is quite different to what we've seen in the past. So with that being said and done, this is where the dungeon entrance is. It's at the back of the uh, bar or pub or uh, tavern where Conan is. And so you will need a night vision mask or some sort of uh, item that will light the way. Night vision mask seems to be the good one as well. You also want some torches. And what I want to show you is, as you can see, these weapons right here something has changed they don't do a hundred percent armor penetration anymore so they are quite useless now especially when it comes to the boss they seem to do less damage than the doom two-handed hammer same thing applies with the world breaker they have been nerfed and over here as you can see these are things that you can get from the dungeon you can also get the kahari steel which you will need to craft the items that you will learn in this dungeon and uh, obviously you'll also get the uh, fragments of power which are required for crafting the items so right over there that is the exit that's where you'll come out of the dungeon and the dungeon is located right here in Sepamaru. so that would be 7b so i'm just going to show you that better so you guys can see so this is right there and so we are on b right there so very easy to find very interesting dungeon so let's get into it okay so i've got everything set and ready to go i will be doing this with admin cheats on because i want to showcase some things in this dungeon that i think are pretty darn cool and so now we're inside the dungeon this is kind of like a wine cellar which then leads into a massive dungeon it is going to be a fairly long video because this is a long dungeon as well so let me just make sure that i've got everything set the way I want it to. Uh, I will have God Mode on, but I will not have the cloak on because I want to show you that there are certain skeletons that pop out of the ground. The first boss that you will have to fight is Seth the Drunk. He drops the Truncheon, which is, as you can see, a legendary Truncheon. Obviously, it's not a guaranteed drop, so he has only a chance of dropping it. And I will be using the Executioner Axe. I suggest that you get yourself one of these because they are amazing for killing bosses. I'm going to let this guy attack me just to kind of show you his combat mechanics because it is quite unique to this character. He does fight a drunken style sort of fight. Or his uh, combat mechanics are more like a drunken style. So I just kind of want to show you that. Now obviously from what I've seen in the past, this character does seem to wear different types of clothing. So it's quite easy to dodge his attack as you can see i'm just walking around in a circle and it's gonna end up with him missing most of the times there we go so not that difficult to get rid of obviously you will drop the truncheon i want to show you something else with the truncheon as well you cannot knock him out i did try that right here so you can see He's not tameable, which is quite interesting. Okay. So, I think that's pretty much all that he drops. Now, apparently, there are some bosses in here that are supposed to drop some unique weapons. I haven't seen anything yet. And I'm just going to use the Executioner Axe to show you 
exactly what I mean and why you want to use it. Now, as you can see, he does have a decent amount of HP and he does do or does have some armor reduction. But just watch what the Executioner Axe does when he reaches 10% um, health. It just one shot kills him. So it should be right about now. There we go. Now, this is just a mini boss. Just imagine when you're fighting a tougher boss in this dungeon. Once that boss reaches 10%, the axe will instant kill that boss. So that will make your life that much more easier in this dungeon, which is why I recommend the executioner weapons for the bosses in this dungeon. Uh, also, very important to know is that the bosses hit really hard. So I'm quite pleased with that. They do become quite difficult. So it is quite an end tier dungeon. I'm going to wait for him to respawn. See if we can get him to respawn. So I should have a respawn timer set to a very uh, small time. I want to see if I can get him to um, drop the truncheon just to show you. In the meantime, I'm just going to kind of go this way. There's two more guys right here. These guys are Relic Hunter Treasure Seekers. And... The good thing about these guys is you can knock them out as you can see. So their uh, torpor bar, as I like to call it, does go down. Which means you can knock them out and take them out into the dungeon or take them out of the dungeon and put them in a wheel of pain. As it currently stands now, obviously this may change when the game comes out. Do bear that in mind. So this is one of the details that may change. It's not a bad thing though. I do like the idea that you can knock these guys out and tame them if you want to um it does add more places where you can find the relic hunter treasure seekers as they are quite good thralls anyways so you can already hear the hiccups of uh the boss that we just fought he has respawned so we'll go and give him a instant kill and see if he drops the truncheon hopefully he does the dungeon itself is quite big and long but it's not that complicated it's not really a maze as such although it does leave that impression so let's go and have a look at this guy okay so you can see he's now wearing something different or more like wearing less but nonetheless there we go he has a truncheon so that's just to show you right there it is, of course, a legendary truncheon. I'm not quite sure what the difference is between this and the one that you craft in terms of knocking thralls out. Maybe it does it quicker. Haven't yet tested it. So the path is just basically down this path. I'm going to use flight for this and I just want to show you what the dungeon looks like. It does look amazing and looks very creepy and eerie. And so basically we're going to end up going there and that's where the boss is right there. So we'll have to get our way all the way through this dungeon, all the way to the end. There are quite a few bosses here. Some of them you may have seen, others will be new. Actually, the end boss is quite new and has some very unique mechanics. And so for that, I'm going to cover it in a separate video because I think it deserves it. Some more Relic Hunter Treasure Seekers. And obviously, we've got some ruins around here. And around these ruins, you will find a ton of chests. Well, actually, throughout the whole dungeon, there are many, many, many chests. Some will have items, others will have gold. It's definitely worth looking if you are into looting the things in the dungeon. More Relic Hunter Treasure Seekers. Again, these guys are tameable as it currently stands in the game. So, it's pretty good stuff. So, we just carry on down here. Another one there. I think, if I'm not mistaken, there are some hidden stuff around here so you do want to have a look at it i'm not going to focus on it as you saw to my left there was a little chest and so that chest will either yield some sort of uh steel or fragments of power which is what you'll want now over here this is very important we have relic hunter treasure seekers and we have a relic hunter treasure seeker boss now these guys tend to be harder but they also drop the heart of a hero which is something that you will want to get before you go into the dungeon as you will take corruption and obviously you don't want to go fighting the end boss corrupted because he does dish out quite a decent amount of damage. Definitely worth picking up the heart of a hero from this guy. And as you can see he does also drop the legendary repair kits as well should you need them. After that you just kind of follow this path down this way. And you'll have two more to fight. 
Again, nothing special here, but then you'll have to jump this bridge. Now, if you look down there, that looks to me like instant death. Do bear that in mind. You don't want to miss this jump. We also have these torches all the way around the dungeon. They do help as markers to tell you where you've been and light up the area, as it is quite dark and some areas get even darker as well. So there we go. And... So we're going to go up this path. Nothing too maze-like, as you can see so far. But there does come an area that looks like a city. It looks like a maze, but really it's not. And uh, I can show you exactly what I mean. This is the area that I mean now. I like the design of this portion of the dungeon. It looks pretty cool. I wish they had entrances in here with uh, special unique things that you could possibly find. You can go around this way if you want. You're just going around the main path. I suggest you stick to the main path just to not get lost in the dungeon or disorientated. As you can see, you cannot climb the structures in this dungeon, which makes a lot of sense. But the path is kind of that way, and there's another one right here. So it's up to you which path you want to take. It makes no difference. They both lead to the same direction. And uh, at the end of this, there will be a mini boss that you'll have to fight. So I'm going to kind of show you that there are some chests around here. So it is definitely worth having a look once you get comfortable with the dungeon and uh, know the layout. And the design of this particular area of the dungeon looks pretty amazing. It looks like a abandoned, stroke, demolished city. I do absolutely like it. So I'm just giving you an aerial view of what this place looks like and as you can see both paths lead to the same boss throughout the buildings so to speak or uh, ruins there will be chests that you can find this is the first boss apparently this guy's meant to drop some sort of specific weapon not seen anything like that from him but he does also drop the akari steel which you will need to craft the new items as well as the um fragments of power now one thing i do like about this well is that it makes that noise that you can hear in the background sounds very very creepy and i do like the creep factor into this dungeon it does give it uh, a very eerie feeling and I, I am digging it so again this is like an area that i think could have had something over there i don't know a chest something to some sort of some sort of um reward or hidden reward if you will so as you go up and up is the only way to go from this point because this one is a waterfall if you fall down as you can see you pretty much fall to your death there's a chest here again gold silver uh, some of them drop gold others just random stuff that you may or may not want depending on what you are after in this dungeon uh, the other thing that I can say is uh, this is a big dungeon and there is a lot of empty space in it and I think maybe they should add more NPCs in this dungeon that would be nice maybe some stuff to jump at you I mean there are the little skeletons that come out of the ground that can surprise you but they're quite easy to take out down here there is another boss this guy is a uh, shellback boss or uh, I think it's a kappa boss anyways you can see he has three skulls, so he is going to hit fairly hard, Do Bear that in mind, you will want some heavy armor. This guy does also drop the Kahari water skin. Hopefully he's dropped it for me. Let's just clear it. Okay, there we go. He has dropped it. Now, as it currently stands between this and the normal uh, water skin, there isn't really much of a difference. Apart from the fact that the Kahari water skin is uh, a ways too. There's really no difference in it. It doesn't hold much water or much more water. Uh, I can't quite tell what the difference is. So I don't know why you'd specifically want to kill this boss as it currently stands for that skin. It would be nice if it has some special attribute like satisfying your thirst or using it less to fill up your... Um, uh, or to, to get rehydrated. But as it currently stands, I don't see any difference. So you can't come down this way. This is, uh, by the way, a dead end. And I'll show you this end from the other side as well. So there's really nothing here, but this is just, from my opinion, a bit of an empty space. Another chest down there. Overall, I really like this dungeon. 
and it looks and is really nicely designed it looks creepy it looks like a place you don't want to be in and it has its difficulties i can tell you that uh, the bosses of course look like other bosses that we've seen up till the final boss and i can tell you right now that the little mini bosses that drop the kahari steel which you will want to farm for the purpose of making the armor and weapons uh they do hit very hard so we want to go down there we were on the other side and as i said that is over there where i showed you just then uh, where we want to go and fight the final boss so I'm giving you an aerial view so you guys can kind of uh, plot a course to this next mini boss or boss I think it's a boss at the past three scores it's a boss all right so it's a mini boss but uh, very important it is a mini boss but just keep in mind these guys hit really hard so you really want to be careful with regards to being hit by them so there's another one down here past this bridge and yeah okay i thought there were some npcs around here at some point but yeah just in front of me there is another one in front of an altar and you can see the torches uh in the far distance that's the way we came in so so far not really much of a maze you really want to watch out for these bosses with the two-handed hammers they do go through your shield and they will stun lock you and therefore are able to kill you now you see these little chests right here these are the ones i was on about if you pick them up they'll either give you i think some sort of steel uh so far i've gotten only fragments of power out of them so obviously as you can see i'm holding a torch which is lighting the way but i can also tell you that without the torch this particular area of the dungeon is ridiculously dark I'm only doing this with the torch so you guys can see the amazing uh, work that's gone into the design of this dungeon. I think it looks really nice. It's definitely different to what we've had in the past so I do like what they've done here. I can see a lot of elements that I've not seen before. I like the fog on the ground and or the mist on the ground. It is quite misty and there are areas that I want to show you that uh, like look very very misty when you look down so you can light these to kind of um use as a marker and over here on this end that is where i was before i was going to tell you about so basically we just went around i think maybe that should open up there is another boss somewhere around here in these ruins see if we can find him but yeah there is another boss in these ruins that you'll have to fight where is he? Ah, there he is. So you can see him right there. So what can happen here is you can end up walking past the area where he is and he can aggro onto you and he will end up surprising you with his ads and you can end up being um, outnumbered by the things that you have to fight. Do bear in mind that the uh, glowy skeletons the rates do apply corruption so every time you get hit by them you will gain corruption which will diminish your health and stamina pools which is not going to be fun especially when the bosses hit really hard so then you want to come up this path and at one point it does split up into two separate paths if you take the right path which is what i'm going to do right now you will go into a cave area and the deeper you go in you will start seeing cogwebs on the walls and ceilings and obviously spiders as well at the end of this there is the demon spider boss that you guys know from the world bosses so if you kill him he doesn't drop anything however if you do harvest him you will get a skeleton key and behind them there are three chests uh, i believe the one in the middle will be the legendary chest which will obviously consume the key and give you a legendary item so i think it's this one right here as you can see i don't have the key for it because i haven't harvested the uh demon spider boss and this guy followed me quite a distance but yeah okay so let's get out of here let's go up the path that takes us to the end of this dungeon 
and we'll have a look at some details over there because i do like that specific area i think it's got a lot of nice detail and it's definitely something i want to point out i was quite surprised with how beautiful that area looks so over there is where you want to go down there there's really not much interest but right here this starts to look really nice and if you look at the lighting basically it kind of lights up this little temple area as you can see it's quite dark and there's a lot of um i mean this looks pretty nice I, I really do like it bearing in mind it's meant to be underground so i like the little rays of light that go onto the building in which you're meant to go it does add that creepy factor to the dungeon absolutely like it uh also if you look to the sides there's like mist so like right there that looks really nice and basically you don't want to fall off the cliff because you will just fall to your death i just want to show you this area because i think this is a nice detail worth showing off obviously we've got the undead horrors or whatever they're called that you'll have to fight in order to get into the uh room that has the boss now from the lore that I read, I believe that this is some sort of a demon boss. Therefore, you can poison and uh, use uh, bleed on him and stuff like that. So there's nothing here, which is kind of sad. I wish there was a bit of something to fight or something like that. This is it's the basically the room where you'll fight the boss. I'm just going to show you around so you can come up the steps and kind of come up on this little porch balcony thing right here and jump off down. The boss does not spawn in until you activate the fires that are in a circle. You have to activate all of them. And then that will summon the boss in. So, let me just kind of get these things prepped here. I'm going to show you what the weapons that used to do uh, the... That, that used to have the armor penetration look like now when you use them against this boss now do bear in mind this boss does have a ton of armor and a lot of hp and as you fight him his damage increases as well he does have a ton of amazing mechanics and so i also want to show you that you can as it currently stands apply poison and bleed to him so you have to light these campfires right here. Now obviously this boss I will cover in a separate video because he is quite special in terms of combat mechanics. So the arena or the room closes up and so you cannot get back out. As you see a completely new design for this creature. To me it looks more like an undead or a com combination of an undead with a demon sort of creature which is nice but as you can see up above where the balcony was like a little uh, force field thing so that means you cannot get out there's nowhere to use as a vantage point in this room you can kite this guy around but it won't work for too long because he does summon add he does have some other abilities which again i will cover in a completely separate video i think this guy does deserve it because there's a lot going on with him it's uh you know how i've said in previous videos that i want the dungeon bosses to be a lot more difficult well the devs seem to have listened this guy brings his own challenges and uh, the challenges are both through the damage that he does as well as his helpful and some of the mechanics that he has which of course you guys will have to see to uh, kind of get the idea so once you kill him uh, I've obviously used the uh, admin command to kill him off you saw the little skeletons around that fall to their ground so when you've defeated him you will get normally uh, one of the two recipes one will be for the weapons the other one will be for the kahari uh, armors and as you can see you cannot reactivate the torches to summon them back in he does also have the chance of dropping the mace of thag and i believe the scythe of thag which are two new weapons in the game definitely worth farming for them they are quite nice i haven't been able to get him to drop the scythe of, scythe of thag but i do have the mace i have killed them off that many times so that's kind of pretty much it for this dungeon i'm gonna 
go to my base i'm going to show off the armors so that you guys can have a look at them and see what they look like now obviously because things in this dungeon drop the fragments of power and the kahari steel i'm guessing these will be the items that will be required to craft these items um in terms of the boss or the um recipes that you can learn from this there are two recipes so you will have to do this dungeon at least twice to get both recipes one as i said will be for the weapons and the other ones will be for the armors apart from that unless they had something specific or something unique to the mini bosses that you have to fight this is one of them dungeons that has a lot of potential but if you only get to have or have to do it only twice to um to get to learn the stuff then after that there's really not much reason to come back in here anymore there are other ways of getting the fragments of power that is of course by going into sep and maru so basically what i'm saying is that this dungeon is a step in the right direction from my opinion both in terms of design as well as difficulty but uh what i would like to see more of is rare items for people to farm uh providing that that they don't get nerfed like they did with the lifeblood spear and the sword of chrome and many other items such as the annihilator so obviously that could be i don't know unique armor not necessarily that has um a high and uh, overpowered armor value but maybe i don't know some sort of a uh, unique design lighting element that you can only get from the bosses in the dungeon so maybe that's something for the devs to look at this is one of the armor sets as you can see i like the top half don't like the bottom half so much i mean it's not that bad looking but the next one to me is well again i like the top half really hate the shoes on this it's got like that thing that's kind of folded back i don't really see what the purpose of that is i don't really like the design of it but the top half does look nice and there is a lot of um like lighting effect on the top but i do like the little shine now let's get into the weapons these are the weapons that you learn from defeating the boss and learning the recipes this is one of the axes we've got some daggers right here they look okay uh, they're not that bad looking in design they're not great looking either i do like the hammer i like the skull on it so this is a two-hander i do really like the sword though this one looks really nice i like how it curves so it's definitely unique and so we've got the bow as well this is the spear as you can see and this is the mace that i was on about this is the mace of thag and as you can see it has the uh lighting particle uh the lighting effect on the skull which i think should be added to more weapons in the game so that's what i meant when i said unique items i didn't uh, i wasn't really referring to unique as in incredible damage values i'd say as long as they're up to date and on par with other weapons they could look at adding um unique particle effects on weapons uh you know smoke or uh lighting effect and stuff like that and i think people would farm the heck out of them just because they look cool as long as obviously they are not lesser than the uh more uh effective efficient weapons at killing stuff so as long as they're say more or less on par with the best weapons in the game just because they have the added uh particle effects and uh, lighting effects i think a lot of people would definitely be into that sort of stuff with that being said and done that is pretty much what i wanted to show i mean for me the mace of thag and the scythe of thag which i didn't get look the best i would probably farm that boss just for these weapons just to get my hands on them because they look so nice and for me from where i stand and what i've seen so far in the dungeon which of course is liable to change this is as i said on the test live server i do really like the difficulty of the bosses the fact that they hit really hard even though you have a thrall it does not take them too many hits to kill you and then they also have the ads which make 
life that much more complicated. So at the moment I'm showing you the attack animations for all of the weapons that you can obtain. But this is basically what I was on about in my previous videos that a lot of people didn't get. The dungeons were pretty bland. This one's pretty fun and it's quite difficult and I do like the challenge. With that being said and done, that is it for this video, folks. I do hope that you have enjoyed it and found it useful and informative. If you have, please do not forget to support me and the channel by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new and haven't already for more similar content from myself. And if you have just subscribed, why not check out some of my other videos and guides here on this channel? Who knows, you might just enjoy them. Also, for those interested, you can always find me on the Setopia Discord. Links to this, of course, you can find down below in the video's description as well as in a pinned comment from myself. Until next time, stay safe, folks.